Um, welcome to everybody. Um, today we have uh, Paul Kusri from uh, Abu University presenting his work for the seminar series um, Populism and Emotion, which is organized by the project Unpop, Unpacking Emotion in uh, the title, full title of the project. Uh, unpacking Populism, comparing the formation of emotion narrative and their effects on political behavior, which is a comparative study between Italy and Portugal. Uh, Paolo Cosarini, as I said, comes from the University of Hamburg uh, in, in Denmark and he has been extensively publishing on the topic of populism and emotion, exactly as also two books. He has co edited the book Populism and Fashion Democratic Legitimacy After Austerity, and the second book, um, which um, just came out last year, uh, The Impact of Populism on the European Institution and Civil Society Discourses, Practice, and Policies. Today is actually been a very interesting um, research on the spaces of the people, exploring the geography of affected communities. Yeah, um, sure, great. Uh, thank you for, for your nice words, and thank you for having me here today. I'm very happy to spend a few days with you. Uh, for the seminar we had yesterday, last night, and uh, in the afternoon as well, uh, focused on um, methodologies and how to approach emotions and the informal chat we had last night and these more academic seminars uh, today um, which is focused on the spaces of the people exploring the geographies of affected communities which to some extent summarizes what I'm doing right now in the projects uh, based in uh, Denmark uh, which is uh, looking at the uh, relationship between space and the different types of space and the uh, populist politics. Um, a few uh, caveats, uh, this is not a full-fledged paper, so I'm not presenting uh, something that is finished or published, it's more, as I say, in the title, an exploration. It's exploring the geographies of populism and affected communities. So, um, what I'm doing is basically linking uh, ideas of space, ideas of the people, and ideas of uh, affects and emotions. Um, um, the idea of this seminar is to basically, uh, as I say, link this three dimension of um, um, social and political research, space, uh, the uh, affects and populism uh, by summing also the visual aspects of uh, populist politics. And this is the index of my presentation today, so I'll start by quickly uh, positioning myself uh, within the broad populism studies field. Uh, so trying to locate populism and moving on then to the relationship between space and politics and visual analysis and politics and affect and emotion and poli politics and last but not least uh, giving some insights uh, bringing in some cases uh, from the uh, basically European context mainly uh, of course there are some <laughs> overlapping areas uh, between these seminars and the uh, other talk I gave yesterday, uh, especially for those of you who were there, uh, you're gonna listen to some something at least that I already said, but uh, hopefully, uh, well, with some new uh, examples, uh, insights, ideas, and of course, uh, what I'm um, trying to do today is uh, more than giving something that is. Uh, as I say, full-fledged finished is to uh, opening up for discussion, for questions, for an interaction and debate we can have uh, later on after after a, a few slides that I want to present today. Um, so quite quickly, uh, and I'm 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 very sorry if this presentation is a bit more boring than last night's presentation mm -hmm. because there are. Uh, a few quotes uh, from the literature, but I guess this is the academic standard, so we need to uh, 
uh, refer to uh, other authors and literature. So you're going to see uh, a few examples, a few quotes, a few uh, uh, um, yeah, list of authors and scholars. Uh, I rely on basically, or I build on my research, but it, it, it's quite important, I think, because we are old scholars and we need to uh, deal with the literature and the scholarship. Uh, so this is basically what I'm doing. Um, locating populism. As I already said yesterday, um, my own point of view is a point of view who focuses on the degrees of populism rather than the lists of what it is populism, what is not populism. Uh, and I think this is important, this is important because you've got these two um, big or huge uh, fields of research. The one, on the one hand, uh, those who think that uh, you know, something is populism and something is not populism. And then you've got all the other scholars who think that it's important to focus on the processes of populism, on the logic of populism. Uh, and, and that is uh, all the more um, again, because one can easily acknowledge, as Tavarkaki says, the lack of a coherence and continuity in terms of value, policies, and progress among the different types of populist politics. And that, it, that is important, I think, to stress it at the beginning uh, because, uh, uh, it, to some extent, is it basically shows the differences between, even within the uh, populist politics. And in that sense, I think if we adopt uh, um, Stavarkakis' the clean perspective, which insists on the logic, the political logic of populism, is uh, a fruitful strategy and perspective uh, to start with when we have to deal with populist politics as such, as a phenomenon. So, populism, I think, uh, Stavr, um, the clean, rightly uh, points out, is a particular political logic that revolves around the claim to represent the people, discursively constructed through an antagonistic pitting of the people against the elite, along a down up axis with the people as a large powerless group and the elite as a small and legitimately powerful group that frustrates the elite's legitimacy. Demands. So the, here the idea of the down up access as a logic is key and uh, this is why I wanted to basically bring it here uh, to basically locate myself with the problem studies. Um, let's move on to the three dimension. I want to learn today the idea of space, the idea of effects and the idea of visuality of politics. Of course, uh, space is a part and parcel uh, to politics uh, um, uh, and there are different dimensions of course that are uh, uh, constitutive of politics, the dimension we all live in basically, so the uh, idea of national state which uh, implies a relationship between the in and out the spaces within the state, within the nation, so the idea of the center, periphery, urban, rural, uh, the idea, ideas beyond the state, so the spaces beyond the, the, the state, supranational entities, international alliances, globalization processes, and so on and so forth, and also the natural spaces, biological ecosystem versus human cultural environments. We Mm, all know the idea of the Anthropocene as one of the most uh, fashionable topics and issue nowadays also in social sciences, right? Mm -hmm. So, spaces, the different dimensional spaces I think are important and uh, there's no novel thing in that sense when we uh, analyze the idea of space linked to politics because politics and space are strictly connected. Still, Space is not that much considered within populist studies. It has been very important in nationalism study, but space as such uh, 
has not received the same attention within populism studies, I think, not at least as in national studies, and that is a gap uh, we, I think, are trying to fill by bringing in different perspectives, geography, political geography perspective, and of course in nationalism study as well, trying also to basically um, well, link uh, the hypothesis that these are the two uh, fields of research have stressed, uh, which are related to the things I've, uh, I put here, uh, the uh, uncritical uh, belief that the people belongs to the national state. So we need to kind of question the idea of the, the, this natural idea of the nation state as a container of the people. Basically questioning the uh, national state imaginaries, the, uh, or at least the, the, uh, the, the idea that this is the natural thing, the, the, the only uh, possible relationship between people and the space, national state as the only, and only option. We need also to think about the uh, left behind by globalization hypothesis, which is one of the most known hypotheses that uh, explains uh, the success of populism and nationalism. Uh, and the uh, convergence uh, between the global capitalism and the crisis of global capitalism uh, with the distrust in supranational governance, which is another idea linked to the previous one. So the basically uh, uh, sort of bad consequences of globalization. So the global dimension of space is something that we have to bear in mind when we want to focus on the relationship between the people and the space, as well as the idea of the revenge of the places that don't matter. You, you might know that uh, the, 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 there is the idea that one of the causes of uh, the success of populism is the distance you leave uh, from a train station. The, the farther you leave from a train station, the more likely you are to vote for a populist party, basically. <laughs> and, 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 and that belongs to the idea of the revenge. They want to revert. They want revenge. They want to, to, to be as important in the uh, urban areas, for instance. And all that, of course, uh, leads to this uh, big dichotomy between the re-territorialization of politics and, and the territorialization of populist politics, along with the distrusts with global dynamics. Um, but before moving on, I think uh, it's worth stressing also these spatial vectors that are within populist studies at least those who are already present in, uh, in the broad field of popular studies. Uh, I already said this uh, dichotomy between the uh, vertical and um, horizontal cleavages that to some extent explained the differences or the relationship between nationalism and populism. You know that the clean or others have uh, graphically put that dichotomy into their research, basically trying to send this and this dichotomy into, into uh, nice graphs and schemes that basically explain the differences between nationalism on the one hand and populism, where populism, populism lie in, on this vertical axis, whereas nationalism lies on the horizontal axis, so the in and out uh, belonging to a nation versus the uh, up and down uh, dynamics or logic between the lead and the people, right? But uh, uh, along with that, there are two other spatial dynamics or spatial vectors that have been used within popular studies. 
which correspond to the uh, cultural economic up and down and, and in this case uh, Piero Stigui is one of the scholars that has insisted on that so people are those who belong to the low strata culturally and economically to the low and it's very important to insist on that so we are those who are on the low on the low culture, the popular culture those who have um, uh, you know, uh, not very high salaries and tough life, precarious life so culturally and economically on the low strata versus those who make big money those, the, the cultural elites uh, the uh, global elites and the third one this uh, still special division between populism on the one hand and technocracy on the one hand on the other hand so another special elites if you want vertical sorry axis populism uh, people versus on the top the technocrats and that also is an, a special metaphor that explains uh, populism in a sense all right uh, general ideas about space moving on to uh, other ideas of the visuality uh, on uh, politics and visuality of populism uh, before moving on the uh, on emotions and the emotionality of populism so how is the people visually represented and that is a question that uh, is being uh, asked uh, quite frequent, frequently lately and you might come across a new literature, new scholarship uh, which is focusing on the visuality of the people so the way in which the people uh, is represented as political subjects and that is particularly interesting, I think, because uh, to some extent breaks the barrier of the, of the verbal uh, nature of politics. This idea that uh, politics is uh, made by language in a verbal sense, in a logocentric perspective. So going beyond the logocentric logo perspective if is one of the uh, key um, the research perspective that has been um, developed recently, recently and it goes along with the aesthetic and visual tool within social and political sciences you've got a few references uh, I think uh, here uh, quite interesting because they're kind of breaking as I said this logocentric perspective in this literature I think uh, is very interesting but at the same time poses a few problems from a methodological point of view as I'm quoting here because images work differently from words they are a non-verbal uh, they are of a non-verbal nature but we as scholar need words to assess their political significance and something get lost in this process of course when we analyze images, we analyze them through words and it is uh, a tough task because of that because images are not words but we are trying to explain, analyze, assessing them through words yeah. And um, I might um, send the uh, slides as well uh, if any of you is interested. So, um, in a few words on the um, uh, emotion, um, emotion uh, or emotional aspects of populism, 
which is um, the key uh, or the core of your research project as well. Uh, the core of my own research uh, in the past as well, uh, in the present, but I'm moving towards different fields, so it's not the key aspects of my research anymore, I would say, but of course I'm linking it to other dimensions. Um, but still, it's quite important, I think, to ask the, uh, about the uh, dynamics or affected dyma dynamic dynamics linked to populism, the specificity of these uh, dynamics um, compared to, let's call it, normal or non-populist politics. And as you, of course, you know, uh, there's a huge literature or well, literature about about emotion and the relationship between emotion and, and populism. I wanted to uh, put some examples here of specific emotions and specific emotional dynamics. Um, as I think I, I brought here yesterday in a slide, the emotions are uh, observed and studied from a different perspective. Uh, it's lots of perspectives that have nothing to do with populist politics, but others uh, particularly focused on uh, populist politics too. And these uh, examples of scholars and literature are, I think, those who are more interested in, in a sense that uh, tackle a few key dynamics, uh, as I tried to explain yesterday as well. So, for instance, nostalgia, anger, or um, shame, resentment, and so on and so forth, that are key aspects, vector, dynamic that not only help explain uh, the success uh, of populism as such, but the relationship between populist politics and other dimension of uh, uh, politics has, in this case, I want to explain, with the spatial dimension, so the space, and of course the visual dimension of politics. Um, um, and I wanted to bring here also uh, Salmela and von Schiel, here one of the last references I put here on the slide, because I think uh, these two guys are uh, particularly interesting to read, because they move uh, along different uh, methodological perspective and are very uh, useful for all scholars uh, who want to, um, to focus on emotional dynamics or emotional narratives as, as you do in your project. Uh, talking uh, among other, thi other things about emotional opportunity structures and the differences between left and right wing populism. All right. Um, I didn't want to bore you much with these uh, references and I want to move on with some examples. And I tried to, to do so by bringing in some examples from a few cases. I'm currently focusing on four main cases in Europe. Uh, I haven't brought all of them here. Um, mainly I focus on, right now on Spain, uh, France and some uh, bits of the UK, UK politics, British politics. Um, the idea of urban space, um, I'm not sure, on, uh, or I don't know how familiar you are with uh, Spanish politics or Madrid. Uh, this is a picture of Madrid and it belongs to last year. Uh, uh, regional election in Madrid, and this comes from the Podemos, or Unidas Podemos uh, um, electoral uh, campaign, in which we can see a picture taken from Madrid where we have a few skyscrapers on the, on the back, and uh, yeah, a popular uh, neighborhood here on the front with uh, a variety that says uh, the, they are the minority but they're 
making a lot of noise and let the majority speak e hablo la mayoría with this uh, graphical division between the north the rich part of the city and the south the below the poor neighborhoods which to some extent mirrors the up and down division of populist politics that we are used to right so the elites on the top and the people on the ground right? the rich people the poor people also the writing small letters and big letters a mayoría the majority uh, there's no reference or direct reference to the people uh, still the idea of the majority is quite powerful and it uh, is linked to the poorest areas of Madrid the popular areas of Madrid and if you want to link this to the cultural division also uh, the economic, global, elites and the local uh, people, those who are part of the, you know, the, 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 small, the, the more popular neighborhoods and it's quite interesting, I think uh, and this belongs to the visuality of course of politics and to some extent represents one I think one of the most interesting examples of uh, the visuality of populist point as well for all the reasons that I just stated uh, so the la mayoría, the majority how do we uh, refer to that? Well, the urban space of the working class who is the majority? the majority is made of uh, working class or people belonging to the working class and those um, who are made of well, uh, different cultural backgrounds here again examples of Unidas Podemos uh, um, political program from the from the last year regional elections you've got examples of picture taken directly from the um, electoral program of popular neighborhoods uh, and how do they well how do they represent the people visually uh, here on the left well they belong to or uh, uh, different let's say uh, or they have different origins with a good mix in terms of gender colors uh, so represent the diversity right and they belong to the working class as well and here these two uh, pictures in the middle uh, because they are those who are uh, you know those who belong to the uh, working class they take care of take care of migrants take care of disabled people uh, so visually here is a good representation of what is the people in, um, at least uh, for Mira uh, Podemos right? how do we compare that with other examples in the Spanish case or uh, beyond the Spanish case well, the same urban space is conceived differently with other friends with other words and of course with other visual and emotional uh, narrative Calle Seguras, no mas delincuencia so secured uh, streets uh, no more criminality uh, protege Madrid so um, take care of, of Madrid we need to, 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 to save it to some extent uh, and, and these two pictures are from Vox uh, the right wing uh, political party in Spain or Choisize Vox Banjo pick your, your uh, uh, periphery how you want, you want it to be um, like just like a 
true French uh, girl or a Muslim with a burqa and everything, right? So what they from? Uh, uh, basically vote for uh, the Front National, Rassemblement National, uh, which is a picture from uh, 2007 uh, presidential election. So the idea of the urban space and urban people is visually represented with different friends, different ideas, and associated to different emotional narrative, of course. Not the taking care of uh, the majority, the working and diverse class, but rather those who are collectively uh, represented in, in, a, in a white manner, racialized manner against you know, those who are uh, invading us or are going to change our way of life to some extent. So, a few ideas. Um, beyond the rural, beyond the, the urban space, the space of rurality, how is the people associated to that? Here you've got uh, two, three examples of Vox in which the uh, rurality is associated to authenticity, to traditional uh, habits. Uh, you've got a pig here as one of the Spanish symbols, jamón. Uh, <laughs> There has been there has been a, a huge uh, a huge fight in Spanish politics because one of the ministers suggested that Spaniards should should eat less meat and almost all political parties criticized heavily the minister for criticizing one of the key industry of Spanish uh, you know um, it's it's. It's basically a way of life, you can't really criticize that. So, Santiago Abascal, sitting there in the middle of nature, one of the, one of the you know, uh, rural places that belong to, or is associated to one of the Spanish symbols, okay? Or, one here on the top, you've got uh, another uh, box representative, Macarena Lona in a farm, uh, or Rocio Monasterio, the local uh, Madrid local representative of Vox, defending uh, bullfighting. So symbols of rurality, authenticity, which are uh, you know among the ways they define the spaces of true people along or according to them. Um, to you, a few examples about, uh, or linked to that, about the heteronormativity. Uh, the idea of authenticity is linked also to the ideas of gender, normality. What is normal is uh, being discussed in politics and is associated to ideas of space and is defended with or through different. An emotional narrative. We got two examples from the German uh, AfD, Alternative for Deutschland, uh, Vox, and uh, the League, La Lega. The four are uh, basically defending the tradition, the heteronormativity of family tradition, the, the, the true authenticity. Uh, Alternative from Deutschland, you see, no, we are not from yesterday, we are not from yesterday, we are the Kunft. We are the future, and that is linked to the temporality of politics as well. No? Familien brauchen and last one. Uh, family need uh, relief. And Deutschland, aber normal. Germany, but normal. The, this idea of the normality which represent the frame and here the space is the space of the family 
is not urban rural, but it's the space of the family, the normal space of heteronormal family. And on next to that, you've got this little girl, Lily, uh, who will be happy that their father, their Eltern, who had voted for uh, alternative for Deutschland when she is 18. Uh, unser Program heißt Realität. Reality, humanity, most uh, rights. Our, our own program uh, is uh, called Reality. Uh, same thing for, uh, for the case of Vox, Una Agenda para Ellos. We don't need the uh, 20, 20, 30 agenda, right? We need an agenda Spania, uh, which is the political program of Vox. And for whom? For the family, right? Two fathers, two kids, heteronormativity. Same thing with, uh, you know, what the Lega is saying. Maria, la madre, Giuseppe, il padre, buon Natale, buon Santo Natale, sperando che in Europa nessuno si offenda. And that is because of the recent, uh, you know, the recent uh, fight that we have been witnessing at the European level because they suggested not to greet for Christmas uh, holiday, but just for holidays or you know they're not to offend anybody, or, or so at least from their perspective, right? Now they wanted to to reclaim the Christian origins, so, uh, the heteronormativity again. And here it comes the video, which is I think is quite interesting. Uh, a video from Vox that criticizes criticizes heavily the 2030 agenda, uh, while proposing a new agenda. In Spain, the agenda Spain, Spain agenda, which reproduces all the things that I've been trying to say here, the heteronormativity and the spaces, the traditional spaces of the people. The 2030 agenda is to put it simply our plan. Of the 
12th of October, you know the 12th of October, the discovery of America is celebrated in Spain as the National Day. So the day of the uh, Spanish food, let's say, so the day that I, that I find out. Um, they're claiming, uh, they claim the agenda in Spain against all the uh, agenda 2030, uh, 2030 uh, main goals, which according to them uh, would bring the destruction of the family, uh, open frontier and massive invasion, the climatic religion, the uh, uh, LGBT education within school or school plans, and gender ideology. Instead of that, they want the patriotic type of you know, uh, Spanish politics against globalists and separatists, so again, Catalan people, and globalists were those who, uh, according to them, belong to the center-left spectrum of uh, politics. And uh, quite interestingly, also how they open this video uh, in their uh, Agenda España section. Uh, rural Spain, a father and a little kid walking on the grass and um, claiming, as I say, on, for a patriotic uh, day of patria, the homeland against global. So here again, two spatial dynamics and of course um, visually represented in a um, quite in a, a strong way uh, with uh, lots of uh, um, antagonistic you know, tropes and metaphors uh, with uh, you know, uh, uh, voicing loudly by uh, Santiago Pascal, the leader of Vox and leading or at least implicitly uh, referring to type of specific type of emotion, not, all, not only nostalgia, but hope for the future, for a different future, uh, insecurity when it comes to all the open, open borders, um, Insecurity and uh, uh, well, worry, at least when it comes to education, when it comes to the gender uh, ideology, as they call it, and etc. etc. Um, here, an example, um, still on Vox of um, a quick uh, analysis of uh, the main accounts associated with Vox and how they are using uh, different types of spaces in their online communication. These are uh, a list of the most used hashtag that they use and it's quite interesting that they see that they, because we can see that spaces and different types of spaces are among the most used uh, hashtag within the real life communication Twitter at least so recuperemos Catalonia take we need to take back uh, Catalonia uh, against separatist politics protege Madrid uh, a safe Madrid right uh, solo que la box we we are the only one España siempre, no? forever Spain, or still some uh, some emotional narratives like uh, security, vote, a safe vote, um, barrios seguros, safe neighborhoods, fronteras seguras, uh, safe borders. Um, two things I think and then I'm done. 
the uh, idea of the nation part here again. There are some examples, and I bring here again an example from from Vox and from uh, the French case about the idea of uh, the nation, so uh, a specific type of space, and the way in which they visually and emotionally uh, translate that into their campaign. Uh, and uh, that's quite interesting also because it refers to what we said yesterday about the temporality of politics as well. Uh, on the French case, uh, you see uh, references to, uh, to the past, the idea of reconquest, we need to reconquest what uh, France used to be, and uh, that is the case of Elixamou, who is kind of uh, employing that idea against the uh, great replacement theory, which is this theory according to which a uh, nation is being replaced by other people, basically the massive invasion of immigrants. And associated to that, you see the use of past examples, as in the case of uh, Marine Le Pen, of national eras. So those who are uh, taught to defend the true identity of the nation. Now, as in the case of Vox, here again you see the references of the uh, discovery of America. So you got here Columbus gets into uh, South America, Central America, and conquering uh, a new continent, let's say. And that is part and parcel of their current uh, narrative. And they defend the idea of the um, Iberosphere, this global transatlantic idea of the uh, Spain food, um, the countries where you speak Spanish and that is one of the most important success of uh, the Spanish nation and we need to uh, make references to that and we need to be proud of that proud also of symbols of Spain you, you've never seen uh, flags in Spain or as many flags in Spain as we have been uh, lately seen thanks to the success of the success of Vox they want to be proud of the symbols and the Spanish flag is one of the contested symbol I would say in different countries of course but in maybe, maybe all countries but because it's not one of the symbols that belongs to the national consensus as the anathem or other symbols. Still, they want to be proud of that. They want to be proud of the Spanish colors, Spanish symbols. And they, uh, of course, associate that to uh, different types of uh, political action. That in this case, you've got a mobilization uh, during the lockdown against, um, against the measure that the national government took in order to basically stop the uh, pandemic um, back in 2000, 2020. But still, I want to finish with uh, another example, and in this sense I go back to, uh, to the opposite political spectrum, with a few pictures from uh, Momentum and the Labour Party, uh, in 2018 and 2019 uh, under the uh, leadership of Jeremy Corbyn who uh, very much insisted on the idea of the many against the few so for the many not for the few uh, which mirrors to some extent Podemos idea of the majority against the minority in this uh, up and down perspective and insist, consisted, uh, Momentum and Jeremy Corbyn, Corbyn also, on this um, 
great public policies related to uh, the man, so the study of the political sub subjects, uh, in terms of uh, economic policies, housing, uh, public health, and so on and so forth. With, and these are just a few examples, with concrete, special narratives. If you go through the labor um, programs, uh, political campaigns in 2019, for instance, the last time uh, elections were held in the UK, you can see some interesting examples of how they spatially and visually transform the idea of the many against the few into the political um, communication. And that is interesting because um, I don't want to focus just on the right wing uh, spectrum of politics, which is of course uh, what uh, scholarship is doing, uh, but we need to, to open it up to different perspectives and we see the different, the different uses and abuses also of uh, ideas of space, uh, uh, different tropes and narratives linked to emotion, and um, basically how that is linked to uh, populist politics. So uh, I stop here, I think, and I'm very ha happy if you have questions or I'm happy to take any questions. Hopefully, uh, these few likes uh, will uh, generate a good discussion among us, and that's basically my purpose today. Thank you.